simultaneous shaping. M2 offers a new approach to root canal preparation. Three or four instruments used in progression allow preparation of the canal to the apex without substantially changing the canal morphology. Basic sequence. There is one basic sequence for all types of root canal. After checking patency of the canal to the apex using an ISO 10 hand instrument, for example, a C pilot file, proceed as follows using M2 instruments. M2 ISO 10, taper 04. M2 ISO 15, taper 05. M2 ISO 20, taper 06. M2 ISO 25, taper 06. The basic sequence enables the whole length of the root canal to be shaped conically with the use of the first instrument. In the case of root canals where the apex is reached easily with an ISO 15, white or 20, yellow hand instrument, it is not necessary to use the 1004 or even the 1505 instrument. In such cases, you can start using an instrument with a tip diameter corresponding to that of the hand instrument used to reach the apex. In this case, the 2006 would be the first M2 instrument. Further shaping. Shaping according to the preferred obturation technique. The goal is to achieve a three-dimensional seal of the root canal system, including filling all lateral canals. After using the M2-2506, gauge the apical diameter and proceed as follows according to the desired obturation technique. For lateral condensation of root canals with an apical diameter of 0.25 mm, preparation with the basic sequence is sufficient. For vertical condensation, or for an apical diameter of more than 0.25 mm, it is necessary to increase the taper of the last 5 mm of the root canal using an instrument with a tip diameter corresponding to that of the apex. For this reason, M2 instruments are available in the following sizes. M2 ISO 30, taper 05. M2 ISO 35, taper 04. M2 ISO 40, taper 04. If an 06 taper is insufficient, an ISO size 25 instrument with an 07 taper can be used to create a taper more suitable for vertical condensation. Recommendations and instructions for use. The ideal speed is 280 RPM and should not exceed 350 RPM in order to avoid subjecting the instrument to excess stress, thus weakening its structure. Rotation of the instrument should be started once the instrument has been inserted just inside the root canal entrance. It is important that the instrument is not in contact with the root canal wall when rotation is started. Rotation should be kept at a constant speed during the treatment and no pressure should be exerted on the instrument. M2 cuts as it advances automatically in an apical direction. If it, however, does not advance easily and the instrument is subjected to stress by prolonged contact with the canal wall, it should be withdrawn about 1 to 2 millimeters and used in a passive filing motion. This allows space to be created so that progression towards the apex can be continued. Before doing this, the instrument should be visually checked for signs of wear and should be cleaned of debris. If necessary, this process can be repeated a second time. This is sometimes necessary for particularly difficult root canals. This unique and very important M2 feature allows the coronal third to be enlarged to a taper greater than that of the instrument used, ensuring that each root canal section is cleaned as required. Before commencing preparation with M2 instruments, patency of the root canal should be checked with hand instruments in ISO sizes 8 and 10. The first instrument to be used is M2 ISO 10, taper 04. 
it is inserted into the entrance of the root canal and rotation is started. Contact with the root canal walls makes the instrument progress naturally in increments of one millimeter. In narrow or strongly curved canals, progression can be slowed down to prevent stressing the instrument. In this case, passive filing is recommended before continuing with natural incremental progression. If progression slows again, passive filing should be repeated, alternating with natural incremental progression until the apex is reached. The alternation of passive filing and incremental progression is not always required. In easy canals, the instrument can proceed naturally to the apex without any interruptions. In other cases, passive filing could be necessary just once, whereas in very complex cases, like this lower molar mesial canal, passive filing is necessary several times until the apex has been reached. This will enable the following instrument to work with ease. The second instrument to be used is M2 ISO 15 Taper 05. It is inserted in the same way and it will proceed naturally in the same way as the previous instrument. Particular care must be taken during incremental progression that there is not too much pull on the tip of the instrument. Also in this case, if required, passive filing is alternated with incremental progression. Even with the third instrument in the sequence, there is an increase in both tip diameter and taper. This is an ISO 20 taper 06. It is inserted into the path made by the previous instruments. Here, filing is required only when the tip is a few millimeters from the apex. The fourth and last instrument is an ISO 25, taper 06, very effective and flexible, able to reach full working length even in curved canals without altering the apical anatomy. Every instrument reaches the apex with conical and coronal widening using passive filing if required. This technique is called simultaneous shaping. A lower molar mesial root canal with a strong curve in the apical third has been selected. The root canal is prepared with M2 instruments using the simultaneous shaping technique. Once it has reached the apex, the last instrument, ISO 25, taper 06, the largest and least flexible instrument in the basic sequence, is used at full working length for approximately one minute moving it back and forth, keeping the instrument tip at the apex or just beyond. This has been done to demonstrate the effect of instrument use in respect of apical morphology. The result is significant. Absolute respect of the apex and very precise round preparation.